In managing your assets and liabilities, it's important to remember that bankruptcy isn't the declaration of personal financial ruin. Instead, it signifies a situation where your debts outweigh your assets. For those considering Chapter 7 bankruptcy, it's a way to address this imbalance by liquidating non-exempt assets. These assets may include a secondary residence, a second vehicle, or valuable personal items like jewelry collections. It's worth noting that in Florida, there's a unique provision that shields certain personal assets from liquidation during business insolvency. Interestingly, amidst discussions on bankruptcy, we find an ironic twist. Billionaire Ken Griffin is in the process of constructing the most opulent residential property worldwide, a staggering $1 billion Palm Beach mansion spanning 50,000 square feet. The question arises, why would someone in the midst of such extravagance be interested in bankruptcy matters? Hello everyone. Welcome to Daily Stock Update. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But before that, alert this is not a financial advice video. Ken Griffin's decision to build this extravagant mansion in Florida, a state that offers some unique bankruptcy provisions, opens the door to discussion. In Florida, one can side a step insolvency concerns by initiating a Chapter 7 bankruptcy process while keeping their primary residence and without being compelled to liquidate specific personal assets. Shifting our focus to Citadel, it's intriguing to note that Citadel Securities responded in an unconventional manner when presented with a Sapona from Duquan's attorney. Terraform Labs is actively investigating any potential involvement of Citadel in the UST events of May 2022, relying on insights from various sources, including tweets from the prolific rebirth. Du Quan's initial accusations against Ken Griffin and Citadel for the market turmoil are being further scrutinized, and it appears that this saga is far from over. Signs suggest that Ken Griffin might be feeling the heat of this investigation. Moving forward, let's explore the world of Ursa Fund Management, a significant player with substantial AMC put positions. Notably, Ursa Fund Management and its directors hold substantial stakes in a company named Retail Value. Incorporated, it's worth mentioning that the executive vice president of Retail Value Incorporated has ties to Goldman Sachs, and there have been allegations of market manipulation by Goldman Sachs in relation to AMC. Additionally, Ursa Fund Management was an objector in the conversion reverse split. The question that looms is whether this connection is causing trouble for Goldman Sachs. Will the SEC's forthcoming transparency rules shed light on these matters? The answers could have significant implications for the AMC saga. Now, turning our attention to AMC, we notice an order imbalance of 222,723 shares. While a detailed analysis of why the stock price isn't aligning with expectations can be explored in a separate discussion, the key takeaway is the mounting buying pressure on AMC. As retail investors acquire more shares, the float is under constant pressure. When these shares are eventually sold, they become real shares, potentially adding complexity to the situation. Factors such as regulation, margin calls, or a market collapse may come into play. To delve into some statistics, AMC currently boasts a short interest of 6.62%, with a utilization rate of 38%. The number of shares on loan exceeds 15 million closely approaching the $16 million mark. The bar average stands at 1.44%, and the maximum short interest is once again on the rise, currently at 14.39%. As of now, AMC's stock is trading at $9.38, with a modest 1% gain for the day. Many are wondering about the trajectory of this lottery stock, especially as it has been trading sideways for most of the week. The technical analysis indicates the presence of a hammer candle pattern. However, the lack of a substantial increase in trading volume raises concerns. The hope is for a volume surge, which could potentially trigger a significant price movement. In this scenario, 
ANC may continue to consolidate as long as it remains resilient in a bearish broader market, eventually leading to a bullish surge. The bigger picture, including the overall market sentiment, will be discussed in more detail later in the video. For those closely following AMC, it's essential to watch for key levels, such as $10.35, and $10.75, and $13.25. And a drop below $9 could signal a different narrative, with support expected at $8.60. If that materializes, it could lead to a more bearish outlook, potentially touching the city price target. A notable point is that AMC currently has 3.3 million shares available for borrowing. Furthermore, the options market reflects a bullish sentiment, with 12,000 calls compared to 9,000 puts expiring in the money. However, with 86,000 out-of-the-money calls compared to 33,000, the option chain's tone is mixed. It's important to remember that Friday often brings specific market behaviors that impact options. Shifting our focus to GameStop, the stock is trading at $13.48 with a 1.68% decline on the day. Speculation about GameStop's future direction is a topic of interest. Some are confident about its upward potential, but others, like the narrator, anticipate a controlled sell-off. The possibility of breaking below the $13 support level is discussed, with a potential target of $10.10 in the near future. In more dire scenarios, GameStop could test $3.75, thereby filling a significant price gap. The narrator highlights the presence of a supply zone and points out the importance of monitoring support levels. GameStop currently has 1.5 million shares available for borrowing with a recent borrowing fee of 1.6%. The option chain is noteworthy for its bearish stance, with only 900 calls compared to 5,000 puts expiring in the money. This suggests that despite bullish sentiment from some traders, market makers may be capitalizing on the premium associated with bullish bets on GameStop. The relationship between trading volume and short exempts is discussed with lower volume linked to fewer short exempts. In a broader context, hedge funds are facing a challenging environment. Confidence among hedge fund managers in their economic prospects has dwindled, as indicated by a 2.1 point drop in the average measure of confidence quarter over quarter for 2023. This decline reflects the financial struggles that many hedge funds are currently experiencing. In contrast, Retail investors often view their paper losses differently, understanding that their investment thesis remains intact. On a regulatory note, the SEC is seeking $770 million in penalties from Ripple, a case with a history of twists and turns. Chief Morgan Chase recently revealed unrealized losses of $40 billion in its portfolio for the third quarter, indicating the inherent risks in the financial industry. In the broader economic landscape, the U.S. GDP exhibited a remarkable increase of 4.9% in the third quarter, surpassing expectations of 4.3%. This surge in GDP, the largest since Key 4 2022, represents the fifth consecutive quarterly rise. Despite factors such as higher interest rates and geopolitical tensions, the GDP continues its upward trajectory. Now let's discuss the S&P 500's levels and recent performance. The S&P 500 is currently trading at 1427, marking a 0.78% decrease for the day. The narrator anticipates a potential dip to 413 for the S&P 500, hoping for a rebound from that level. A worst-case scenario could see the index touching 409 before making a recovery. Despite short-term fluctuations, there's optimism about a robust market rally in November, signaling a bullish stance on the overall market. Shifting our focus to the realm of cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin recently tested the $35,000 level, but faced a slight rejection. The battle for a breakout continues, with key levels to watch including $40,000, $46,000, and $54,000. The cryptocurrency market remains dynamic, 
presenting opportunities and challenges. In summary, this paraphrased script has delved into various facets of financial and market-related topics, providing insights and perspectives on bankruptcy. High-profile individuals like Ken Griffin, the AMC saga, GameStop, hedge fund struggles, regulatory developments, and economic indicators. The evolving landscape of finance and investments remains a subject of constant scrutiny, offering both challenges and opportunities for market participants. Friends, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about today's video? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.